We're going to continue with the rear end of our NB48 2.2 buggy build, moving on to bag G, which contains some highly customizable parts, the rear hubs and camber links. The rear hubs and camber links bag, bag G, contain parts that you can really use to begin to customize according to your driving style or particular race surface. We have some pre-built metal drive shafts that are lightweight as well as incredibly strong and we'll be adding the rear camber links which need to be constructed beforehand. So with that said, let's get started. We'll begin by inserting the customizable inserts into the top of the hub, one on either side. With that done, insert a flanged bearing into the front and another bearing into the rear of the hub before feeding through a drive shaft and checking it's nice and free. Note the hole in the end here, since after dropping on a 17mm wheel hex, we'll need to insert a hex pin through the hex and through the hole in the drive shaft, taking care to ensure the flat portion of the pin faces outwards, so that a 4mm set screw, complete with some thread lock, can be inserted and tightened into position. And with that, the first axle is complete and should be totally free moving. Repeat the same steps for the opposite side. And with that said, our rear hubs and drive shafts are complete. Both should turn completely freely with no binding whatsoever. Okay, so now we're ready to install this onto the rear assembly. Start by inserting hinge pin bushings into either side of the arm from the outer side. And now we can insert the dog bone end of the drive shaft into the cup and seat the hub into position. Although before feeding the hinge pin through, we need to add shims to either side of the hub, which need to be cut from the plastic tree, 2mm on the front side and 1mm on the rear, after which the hinge pin can slide through, and is secured into place with a black lock nut on both sides, holding one side with a wrench and tightening the other. Again, we don't want to over tighten here and create any binding issues, just enough so it's snug. Repeat the same process on the other side too, and check to ensure everything is free moving. There should be no binding here whatsoever. So with the rear hubs and drive shafts now in place, we need to build our camber links. To do this, we need to insert the turnbuckles into the rod ends. Note the rod ends are not pre-threaded. So as we insert the turnbuckles, we'll be creating the threads at the same time. The best way to do this is to apply a small amount of grease to the turnbuckle threads, which stops them popping off with adjustments later, and then push it hard into the rod end as you twist. You'll find it easier to use a wrench to grip the turnbuckle as you twist the rod end into place. Repeat on the opposite end, noting that each turnbuckle should have one straight rod end and one angled rod end. Once complete, the turnbuckle should have a 43.25mm gap between rod ends. There's a handy actual size diagram in the manual to compare against if needed. It's the same process on the second link. Note that the small notch on the turnbuckle must face the left side of the vehicle. Because both rod ends differ, take care to build with the notch facing the straight rod end and the second with the notch facing the angled rod end. This way they'll sit on the vehicle in the correct orientation. With links prepared, insert a pivot ball into each rod end. Time to get these installed. So with the rear assembly pointing forwards, the angled rod end will connect to the top of the hub and the other to the shock tower. Again, we have some customization available here, although the stock positions are the outermost hole on the hub, where we insert a 25mm cap head screw, complete with a single 8mm washer, secured with a M3 flanged lock nut on the opposite end. The other end of the camber link attaches to the shock tower. Again, plenty of options here, but stock position being the inside middle hole, where we insert another 25mm cap head screw from the rear forwards, while on the opposite end we place an 8mm washer, a single M3 countersunk washer, and then the link itself, before securing into place with another flanged lock nut. One side complete. Install the final remaining camber link on the opposite side, again ensuring the notch in the turnbuckle is to the left, which should be true when placing the angled rod end towards the hub, and ensuring you're using the same mounting positions and hardware as the opposite side before securing into place. And that's our rear end assembly pretty much complete. Everything is turning nice and freely, super high quality stuff. 
At this point, we can place the rear assembly to one side and move across to the front end assembly in the next video with bag H.